Hello, my friends. You know, enough of you have been asking about what I have in this pack that I thought I just would show you my everyday carry pack. And hopefully you won't be too disappointed because, you know, this is kind of a, a family pack. This is going to come with me every time we go hiking, especially every time we go to the beach. So I'm thinking a lot about what kind of uh, medical situations we might encounter and then just some everyday useful stuff. I'm not packing heat or anything in here, so nothing glorious, but it's always fun to see what's in people's packs. And then of course, in the end to hear what you think I should add to this pack without adding too much weight. The first question was about the carabiners and these are just on there as multi-purpose tools and these are you can hang a pig with these you can join two things together with these and with two of them even with one and some good knot work you can create a mechanical advantage with a rope so that you can haul something up or pull something towards you that otherwise you won't be able to um, when I set up a slack line I just use a system with actually three carabiners, but again, you can use that mechanical advantage to get a really, really tight line that you couldn't get just by pulling it with your regular muscles alone. On the side, I've got some witch hazel. This is for irrigating wounds. After I had my mishap with the wave, there were two women there, two native women that were um, EMTs. And they said they use witch hazel instead of the regular alcohol. And it works really well. I didn't have any infection from that. So thanks to them for turning me on to that. I have <laughs> some things that you'd think of, like a life straw. I know a lot of you prefer, prefer a Sawyer Mini, but these have worked well for me. And I've got a bunch of extras, so I always keep one of those in there. Uh, compass, of course. It's hard to find good compasses these days. This is a Silva Polaris. I don't think I can get these online anymore, but even that one, look, there's a bubble in it and it's only about two years old. Duct tape, always useful for many, many things. Um, I've got some bug netting in here. This is, I have two sets of this, and this is actually no seam netting, which we used in Wisconsin. And Again, multi-uses. This can be a stage one water filter because it's got a very, very thin weave. You can tie up the corners and use it as a collecting bag. There's enough here that it can act as a shade sail if you need a little bit of shade. So this is also just to drape over heads. If say the girls were out on a hike, it's super mosquito-y, they can just drape this over their heads. If they're wearing a hat, it makes a perfect bug net. And I have enough of it it's inexpensive enough that I can just give it away if there's that tourist who is on a jungle trail and they're really getting bugged. Okay, I have two moras in here. This one is not taken care of. This is carbon steel and boy, I'm finding that carbon steel, it's really rough here in Hawaii. It rusts out really quickly, but I don't take care of this one. It's just a beater knife. So I've used this as a screwdriver, uh, as a pry bar, to hack things down, all kinds of uses. I do keep a good blade on it, but it's just meant to be abused. Then I have a more knife that I take good care of, better care of. This is um, stainless steel. It has a nice enough tip that I can just pick, you know, if there's a sliver or something out of there, it's needle sharp. I keep it very, very sharp and it has that redundancy of the light my fire fire steel which is nice so two more knives i have epipens in here this is for us all kinds of new things that possibly you could have an allergic reaction to and again you come by a tourist or somebody else who was stung by some wasps or bee and they're having an allergic reaction. So we make a habit of always keeping EpiPens on us. These are kids and this is an adult. Mosquito balm. 
This is Sting No More. This is developed by a university here in Hawaii. And it is a, a spray and then a gel that basically is for jellyfish stings. And really good results with this. I haven't used it personally, but read all about it. And especially the box jellyfish. The box jellyfish we have here in Hawaii are not as dangerous as the box jellyfish in Australia, but they still pack a painful punch. And this can really remove that sting right away. We got a slightly larger kit than we'd have just for our family so that at the beach, sometimes whoosh, they come in. Again, a number of tourists, they get stung. We can help people out. Oh yeah, it works for fire ants too. Vinyl exam gloves. So my whole life I've had this, I don't know, blessing or curse of coming upon people who need help in one way or another, car accident or bitten by something or whatever it is. So I try to always keep some vinyl exam gloves. It's kind of beat up um, just to protect against bloodborne illnesses, hepatitis, AIDS, right here. Might be able to see them couple of safety pins. Same purpose as these, except smaller. So putting together, oh, like a rain jacket, you lose a button, whatever it would be, really quick, easy, multi-purpose fix here. Toothpaste. It's very, very important to always have fresh breath. So Tom's a main. Now this is actually, <laughs> this is actually because we are down by the water a lot. I'm trying to learn all the fish for spear fishing and get my breath holding up. And so with the masks, this is a really good defogger. I'm scuba certified. And way back when, when I got my scuba certification, I learned about toothpaste as a defogger. Works really, really well. So I always keep some of this in my pack. This is a pretty tight in there. That's a metal uh, steel for sharpening knives and then I keep it wrapped in a braided fishing line and I discovered this a while back and thought wow this is really going to be the ultimate in lightweight very very strong cordage and it does function very well the negative about it is that you have to relearn knots if you haven't learned fishing knots because it's such a slippery slippery rope or cordage that it's not going to, standard knots just slip right out of it. So you do have to learn some fishing knots that are going to work with that. A fire steel, of course, with a little bit of paracord. You want to hold that? Sure, perfect. Magnifying glass. And I found that in the Hawaiian sun, the magnifying glass works very, very well for starting fires. Uh, boy, you can tell the difference between the Wisconsin sun and the Hawaii sun. But really, this is mostly for medical purposes, again, getting slivers out, things like that. And checking out the world, right? When yeah. we want to see some cool bog or something like totally. that. And some lip balm. I try to keep some SPF lip balm with some titanium dioxide in it. Not just for ourselves, but again, you run across that walker, that hiker, that they're just really getting burned. A lot of the tourists are just not prepared for the power of the sun here. It will burn you very quickly, especially if you're from the northern climb. I've even gotten burned when I have a little bit of sunscreen on my face. Yeah, it's, it's intense. So here, again, something we can offer to somebody if they are in need. And I've got a big redundant fire steel in here. Okay. We have got our little med kit. So in here, I'm not going to dump these out. This is not necessarily a good idea to keep a whole bunch of different drugs in one container, but if you know the numbers and the colors and the shapes, then you can trust yourself and you can do it. So I keep Benadryl in here in case of a more minor allergic reaction. Um, we keep some painkillers in here, some Aleve and some Advil and Tylenol. Those work on different routes in our, in our system. So keep both of those. Various drugs in there. Band-Aids, of course. Useful. Oh, yeah. 
and these are roll up. Right there. Oh, those are hilarious. I love, I love just pretend. Yeah. Like when we're, he used to keep them in the car and I just like. Yeah, so you got something in your eye there a little bit ago and you get a little bit of eye irritation. It can make you very sun sensitive. So these are, are handy to have along and I just keep them wrapped around some gauze. Mind if I put that there? We've got some wound tape for keeping the gauze on or just putting over a wound. Some neosporin, um, butterfly closures. I use these all the time. It's probably my favorite favorite thing for closing up wounds. Um, I know there's, there's better ways. Some people like staples or things, but a lot of times when I've needed stitches, I've just used butterfly closures to good effect. It doesn't really get cold here in Hawaii. So these were very useful in Wisconsin. <laughs> There's something that you needed in Wisconsin, but Yeah, here. because if you lose your dexterity, and these could give you your dexterity back. But that heat, and again, I haven't been able to test this out, with jellyfish stings is supposed to really, really help to mitigate the pain from the jellyfish stings. Oh, wow, well, I didn't know that. I thought that you were gonna, you had just found these and you wanted no, to like. Nope, it's used oh, with our yeah. sting no more. And then we keep some new skin liquid bandage. So, uh, boy, a bunch of you, when I was hit by that wave, were saying, really watch the infection in these waters. And so this can really cover up a wound very, very nicely if you don't want to leave it open. There. And a little whistle off of one of my old light my fire uh, fire steels. <laughs> Wow, I've got a lot of holes here. I'm like a table. Yeah, the last thing I have in here is right in the back. And I'm not going to take these out, but I've got two large, heavy duty garbage bags and one smaller, regular kind of kitchen garbage bag. The kitchen one is for rain. So to keep this and especially photographic equipment dry, that can go right over it in the event of rain. And the big ones, those are more heavy duty shelters. They're rain ponchos. With the four of us, those are big enough. You get the really big ones. I don't know what they, 30 or 50 gallon, I don't know, they're huge. And we can fit one girl under each one, poke some holes, and we can have these rain ponchos that work for the whole family just with these two. Again, multi-use, you can use them to carry coconuts or other wild edibles. Uh, Rebecca's out harvesting some koa haole beans. Oh, haole koa something. I don't know. We're learning this plant. So um, all these different little things that you can harvest with. It's a real bummer if you're out and the sun's really down on you and you don't want to take off your shirt and you want to harvest stuff and there's nothing to carry it in. So those bags are really, really nice to have. Two big ones and one, one little, little one. one. And the other thing I keep in this pack then is a camera. I keep the GoPro in here and it's actually not in here right now, but the GoPro is for more, you know, underwater or raining or <laughs> anything uh, like that. Yeah, basically. And then I have kind of a beater camera that I carry along in here too so that we can do more spontaneous. Um, Climbing around on some rocks. Let's go explore these. Whatever it might guys. be. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Today, both of those are charging and I just have the good camera along because I knew I was going to do this video. But in general, the good camera stays home and I bring those two more rugged, durable cameras and just in case there's something really cool that we want to get footage of. So that's it. I wanted to make a lightweight pack that would have all kinds of different little items that would have multi-purpose uses so that if we need something or something comes up we tend to have a fix here from the duct tape to emergency stuff yeah <laughs> share what you think I should add to this pack in the comments what are we missing right yeah and of course if you want share some of the favorite things that you keep in your pack or even make a whole list of what you keep in your everyday carry pack. All right, love to you all. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to hear what you have to say in the comments. Aloha. Aloha.